Queen Cava, Mayor of Miami-Dade County, do hereby grant a full mayoral pardon for two of our lucky friends, Holly and Jolly, and we wish them many, many happy, healthy years ahead. Holly and Jolly are two pigs who will not end up on someone's Christmas table. Roasted pig is the centerpiece for many around Miami at Christmas Day Feast. Someone playing poker last weekend in Atlantic City is having a very nice holiday. The player hit a royal flush at the progressive poker table. That $5 bet turned into $1.6 million jackpot, according to Harris Mike Zippel. That's the highest amount that Caesars Entertainment has given in New Jersey. And the dealer who passed out that royal flush got some nice love. He said, thank you for dealer. That's your money. I said, thank you so much. You are the nice person. Dealer Devin Papa got a $77,000 tip. Rich Johnson, USA News. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Trust the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts to recommend the best product for your car. Like five quarts of Mobile One Full Synthetic, now just $33.95, plus earn double O rewards points. Extend the life of your vehicle, improve performance, and protect your engine against bugs and wear with Mobile One Full Synthetic at O'Reilly Auto Parts and O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. <laughs> The following is an America Matters Media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters Media. better believe you know what that theme song means by now. That's right. It's another episode of America Matters with Eddie Floyd and Leo Zaki. Today, I've got a very special guest host. I have Ray Rocha from Red Move, and he's here on purpose because our first very special guest is Paul D. White, and he has done more for education here in Northern Nevada, in my opinion, than anybody else. Paul, welcome to America Matters, my friend. Hello, Paul. Okay, Ray, tell us you were at, the, as we get Paul set up, okay, as we get him set up to talk, tell us about, uh, uh, if you will, the news that took place yesterday, and then we'll get Paul on. Yeah, uh, several of the TV stations were there, and the group that Paul's representing or started is called Education Crusade, and It'll be, it, it'll be going right now. It start with Dilworth. Dilworth. The issues there. You know what? Let's do. Paul is on now. Oh, let's okay. start with Paul. Paul, you're live on America yep, Matters. Yep. Sorry for the difficulty to begin with, but welcome. Yep, and what you missed was a compliment. I said you have done single handedly more for education in my mind here in Northern Nevada than has anyone recently. Thank you again for what you've done. Tell us what you've done. Ray Roach is here to talk to you. He was at the press conference yesterday. I watched you and Joey Gilbert hold that press conference. And, ready? great job, Paul. Great job. Well, thanks. Thanks, Eddie. There's a lot of good people really getting involved on this. Um, phone, uh, phone's been ringing off the hook all morning with tips coming in, including the one at the at a middle school this morning we can talk about. But, uh, yeah, people have had enough with the schools. They're waking up, and they, they want to know more. We've had close to 1,000 people uh, watch that tape since it got posted, and more coming. Wow. Do you know what, Paul? You're going to get a lot more coming. i, I tell you how far it has reached. I am now looking at my sidekick and the co-host of America Matters, Leo Zaki. He's running for governor in the state of California. Yeah. He's heard about what you've done for education and, uh, and the fact that everything you are doing, he said to me, I wish we had more Paul Whites here in the state of California. Leo, are you there yet? Yes, sir. I'm right here, Eddie. Um, and, you know, there's a lot 
this is just such a, a ridiculous thing that's taking place. And Paul, I, I'm so glad that you're getting involved and, and bringing this far, far bigger attention because it so deserves it. I'm glad Joey Gilbert's getting involved too. He's a really great guy. Yeah, he was who I was pulling for you guys in Nevada. Yep, he he was. As a matter of fact, uh, he was one in the crowd when you came all the way from California to speak at a Red Move event when we did the gubernatorial debates there, which, of course, YouTube had to pull down because, let's face it, we're all too conservative, I guess, in nature. That's the way it happens nowadays. The best thing that I think has happened to the conservatives is one man. Elon Musk, and yeah. I'll say it again over and yep. over and over again. Do you agree with me, Paul? Yeah, you bet I do. Oh, bet. Paul, before you go on, and you need to explain the education uh, program that you have, but you're going to love this after you explain him what happened yesterday and what's going on with the schools. Oh, you're going to share your story with him. I got a quick question for Leo, though. Leo, who is that beautiful young lady with you right there in Hawaii? Oh, uh, it's none other than Lillian Zaki. Oh, my favorite human being on earth, Lillian Zaki. Okay, well, Lillian and Leo, we're going to go back to Paul right now. So go ahead, Paul. Well, it just it, uh, it went real well yesterday. And he, uh, Ray, Ray was there and right on point, had some good stuff to say too. And we just, uh, they're not getting the kids to school. They're not clean and sober. They're not behaving. And now they're starting to, uh, assault, uh, assault staff. We're, we're, we're anticipating today. Well, you saw the thing with that, where we've, uh, told a parent is sending us a tape at, from, from one of the local high schools that shows minutes, literally minutes of just a full on riot. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so with more news on that as we get our hands on the tape. But, yeah, people just, it's got to be exposed, Eddie, and then it can, then we can bring in the solutions that we've got. Amen. But people first, have got to, they got to know how bad it is. Yeah, and you know what? Not only is it as bad as Paul D. White and Joey Gilbert have shown everybody in that press conference yesterday, wait until you hear Ray Roach's story, and he got it firsthand, <laughs> firsthand. Tell him, Ray. Yeah, I, I talk about kids' behavior and discipline, lack of. It so happened yesterday after I left your event that I had to go to one of the local stores in Sparks. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we're fortunate to live in an upscale area of Sparks, and I live in a gated community. Mm -hmm. But I don't know exactly how it came about, but maybe it was, I said something about we were there when education, well, one of the clerks brought up, you think it's bad in school. You ought to see the kids that come in here, and I confirm this today with a third in control of this store, that, no that they walk in, the kids at lunchtime, for example, in different times, they walk in, they'll grab whatever they want to eat, chicken, whatever, throw the bones on the floor. What? And defy, yep. and defy any of the clerks to kick them out. Uh -huh. Because a couple of clerks did, and guess what happened? Wow. They got fired. You know what? Let me share something with you before Paul, before Paul responds to that. I used to, as I grew up, Paul, I owned a little donkey, a little male donkey, okay? And if I acted like that in a store, my grandmother would have kicked my ass. You get it? You know, so, <laughs> so uh, it's getting, it's, it's everywhere, and, and it starts in the homes. And it wasn't just this store. When I talked to a supervisor today, it's, and Sparks is a fairly, fairly conservative area. It is. Except maybe the west side, but uh, it's basically conservative. It's at all the stores. They're being robbed blind. One of the, oh, stores, so. one of the stores are across from Reed High. And they go in, and they have, a, you know, take your backpacks off, but they steal the place blind and defy it. And then this manager said, not only are they challenging people to discipline them, mm -hmm. but they actually are 
swearing at some of the clerks and people working there and threatening them. Right. They called them the B word. Didn't they call that lady the B word? Yep. Okay, that's a, that, that's kind of what I, that's what I thought. Now, Leo, you and Lillian aren't going to like what I'm going to say, but I said it earlier prior to the show, and I was picking on one of the cities that you plan to be governor for, San Francisco. I said, you know, Sparks, if people keep shoplifting like they're doing, they're going to wind up being like San Francisco. And I didn't mean to, right. to uh, attack you, Leo and Lillian, but the bottom line is the truth. We need the to start in homes, parents, and it's mothers, not, fathers. It's not just in Sparks, Nevada. No. Because somebody I talked to, and Paul agree, it's all over, not only in the schools, but the lack of discipline. A lot of people shouldn't have kids because uh-huh. they're not disciplined yes. and showing them behavior. It's all over the United States. They're shoplifting is what you might as well call it. Right. And you could go to jail for that, or at least be fine. No, 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 no. Shoplift in San Francisco, as long as you're under what amount, Leo? What's the amount? Under a thousand dollars. Under a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah it, it's ridiculous. You know, this, yeah. this, this behavior is absolutely unacceptable, and this is what happens when you don't have people taking responsibility for their actions. This right. is being, this is being propagated by the concept of the nanny state, where the government is supposed to provide and take care of you. And this is having a lot of negative repercussions all the way through. You have people who are getting, uh, you know, abortions or, 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 or stuff from Planned Parenthood, or they just take it for granted. Maybe they don't even do that because they know that the government is going to give them more money for having these children that they could really care less about. They only care about the money that they're going to get from the government. Right. And then, so they're not there at home. They're not invested in the child's life. They don't care about the kids. Then they the kids act out. The parents do nothing. It's not their responsibility. They send the kids to school. Oh, it's the school's problem. Let the school take care of it. The school's hands are tied because there's all sorts of legal uh, battles that they would have to fight if they were to, you know, somehow reprimand a child like that. Um, right. And, and then it's just everybody's just shifting the blame. This is what happens when you shift the blame. Don't take responsibility. You get this. And 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 these children, they're what it sounds like. This kind of behavior is something you would see in a prison. All right. And these yeah. schools are being. Yeah turn into to prison and training for these for these brats you better believe it paul i want you to respond to that before i go back to ray because leo hit the nail on the head and i can tell you that that young lady with him right there in hawaii on the film i wish you could see the film but that young lady was his or is his grandmother and i can tell you she single-handedly probably along with maybe another relative or two is responsible for leo zaki being in the position he is today running for governor in the state of california so paul take it away well the the shoplifting thing has been worse than anybody knows for a long time uh, the home depots uh are having uh, they tell me anywhere seven to eight times a day, people come in there. I'm talking about picking up generators, air conditioners, walking out, loading them in pickup trucks. A guy, uh, a friend of mine was at a Walmart uh, over there by Fire Creek and um, uh, talking to an employee who said that the day before, a group of six people had come in and gone to the back and filled up a shopping cart with electronics, flat screen TVs, all kinds of stuff came rolling out, daring anybody to stop them, to a U-Haul truck parked outside waiting for them, loaded the truck up and took off. Wow. Uh, yeah. You, you know what? Well, is, is, it, is it any wonder <laughs> that we have kids doing this? Oh, no. You know, well, here's the answer. Here's the answer right now. When are we going to get it through our heads? We need to defund the police. What? <laughs> BS. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, are you kidding me? Who could possibly in their right mind anywhere in these great United States of America, coast to coast, border to border, who could possibly say we need to defund the police except for idiots? That's yeah, nobody, exactly right. nobody in your right mind. Right. You know, Paul, no. before we get off the education part of it, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about the shoplifting and and everything else that's going on with kids and behavior, why don't you tell the total number that you have and some of the plans that you're planning besides Dilworth? Please do. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a hotline for anybody can report what's going on in their school. Uh, parents, students, teachers, anybody who's seeing this stuff, 
Uh, we've been getting some calls already today, just after announcing it yesterday. Um, you got it. You got to speak up. And um, the idea that silence, just as Ellie Weasel said, you know, the famous Nazi hunter, he said, "Silence favors the oppressor, never the oppressed." Exactly. And you got you got to speak up. So, Paul, give the uh, number and your future plans. Yeah, so the hotline number is 775-685-8200, 775-685-8200, uh, anytime. And uh, we just, it's, it's strictly confidential, and we will absolutely act on it. Just, just like we did this morning with the uh, Mendive uh, Middle School. We got the report, and an hour and a half later, the, the uh, press release is out there with the media now. Right. And you know what? That's what gets me. Everybody said, oh, yeah, but Eddie, you know, that's just Dilworth. They've got a reputation. They've got, no, they don't have a reputation. Uh It's every school in our area is suffering to some degree. Maybe Dilworth suffers a little more than, than some, but I don't think so. I think this has taken place nationwide, and I sure as heck know, for, because of many conversations with Lillian and Leo Zaki, uh, you're not going to believe it, Paul. This has taken place all over California, even worse. Right, Leo? Well, Joey brought it up that nationwide, this is happening not only in Nevada, in all the rural counties, not just Clark and Washoe, but nationwide. Right. Leo, am I right on the California, brother? No, you're you're absolutely right. And what I'd be more curious about is to figure out what the, what are the demographics of this taking place. Uh, because I, I was watching a clip of Charlie Kirk yesterday, and and he was talking about uh, that he had uh, one of these liberal students asking him a question. You know, saying you know, isn't there racism because more more blacks are in prison than whites? And and Charlie's response was, well, don't you realize that there's more households, uh, you know, more black households that don't have two parents in them as opposed to, say, white households and even Asian households. Sure. Uh, and that's why you're getting it. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Oh, sure. sure it is. And, it's, and the thing is, the uh, the growing number of, when you hear uh, Candace Owens, the Thomas Sowell, uh, uh, Jason Riley, et cetera, Jason Whitlock, all these people where you've got good black families going on, their kids come up right and do the right thing just like anybody. And when you've got more dads missing, that's absolutely what it is. And it's got it's got nothing to do with race. It's got everything to do with culture. And that culture's got to change across America. Right. You know, yeah. Paul, I'm going to ask a big favor. Then I'm going to go to Leo. The big favor is very, very simple. I want to continue to help with what your efforts are, with what Joey's efforts are, with what people who care about our next generation, what their efforts are, I want to help. I would like to invite you, Joey, we'll have you come back, Ray, and of course me and Leo would be honored to have all three of you on America Matters uh, real soon, maybe even next week if you could make that happen, Paul, because we need to stay on top of this so that it does not continue to happen, my friend. Oh, of course, of course, Eddie. And what the thing is, we get our hands on this video that we've been promised. Uh, you'd want to put it up on your site. You, you got a whole show just in looking at that. We will. And, you know, and you know, of course, two days ago, uh, a male teacher in high school in uh, Vegas uh, saw three kids uh, harassing a female teacher in her classroom. He went to help her, knocked him down, stomped him, kicked him, punched him in the face. He got hospitalized. Right. And you see, here, here's the thing. Now, Paul, obviously, I'm, I'm so much older than all of you put together in this panel. But I've got to tell you, this type of stuff would have been totally unheard of, unheard of in my high school. OK, I mean, are you kidding me? And you know who would have taken care of business? The other children in that high school. They would have. Oh, they would have jumped up. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, one of the things, Paul, I do want you to explain. It, I heard you say something about Mendive. Is that today? Because, yes, that was about day. Oh, that was, that was the, oh, yeah. Yeah, Mendive today. Was this morning. This morning, I had two, two parents call it in to me. Uh, they took their kid there at 745 this morning, and all the kids, hundreds of kids out there milling around the school, and the parking lot filled with cops and firefighters. Wow. And so they had, well, get this. So they ask, they ask one staff, what is it? 
Well, it was just a kid pulled a fire alarm. They asked some other staff, no, there was a fire back in the home ec room at 745. And then they asked, and the principal's message comes out and says, no, we were addressing a threat, but it's okay now. Let the kids in. Now, the kids were evacuated for 25 minutes. Well, a threat is only going to be a weapon or an explosive. That's what they, that's all they are. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that they had enough info on a threat to bring all the kids out of the school and that in 25 minutes they were able to check an entire huge school building? <laughs> no. So, you know, and you, you want to know what the parents said? They said, we can deal with stuff. They said, our message to the school is quit lying. Amen, brother. Just, just tell the truth about what's going on. It's right. Funny. Oh, yeah, that was just today, right? Right. Well, you have all these soft yeah. people that are in education. They're afraid to lose their jobs. And, I mean, if it's a public school, it, technically it's a government job. These people are really they're just grasping at straws. These people can't do anything. And they, they'll hold on to whatever you know income they can, they can weasel their way into. Wow, you're right, right? Yeah, I was actually shocked since yesterday finding out not just the schools, and I'm fortunate to live in an upscale area, and to find out this is happening at grocery stores, different uh -huh. things, in my area, right? that they're doing this and defying people to do it and threatening them. And, and you see, that's what Paul... Uh, what he's doing, and he's bringing people on board like Joey, and now like Leo, like you, Ray, like me, he's bringing people on board so that we can do something. By the way, that upscale community, that gated community of yours, those gates are to keep you in. They're not to keep people out. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, Paul, I've got, a, I've got a question for you, and it's a very simple well, question. What can Leo yeah. Zaki, running for governor in California, what can his uh, grandmother, who started Zaki, Zaki Farms, the number one employer of people in the state of California at one time before oh, Gruesome oh. Newsome gave them too many, if you will, restrictions. What can we do to help Paul White with this situation? Oh, uh, what, you, what, what you can absolutely do is, Leo, you know, I, I, I was 25 years working in the schools in California. And it's just so, and we fought them from one end to the other. And there's, I've got a book out about it and tape out and stuff. But what you can do is realize that California's situation is just like here. It's underreported. The kids, the majority of the kids are functional and illiterates. LA Unified is so, is so dysfunctional it should be closed down. Oh my and God. So what you can do, just tell people. Just tell people any kind of, any kind of information you get from our uh, sites and videos. Just say here, this stuff and much more is going on here. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and, and just just speak up and tell people until things change. The only one thing is going to change public education anywhere, right. and that is full full funded universal vouchers for every parent. The schools have no competition, so they have no motivation to improve. Right. That's right. That's right. I, I'm a big fan of school choice. I'm a big fan of homeschooling. And I would like to see more uh, local community schools even pop up uh, where people in their neighborhoods are actually providing schooling for that. I think it needs to take place because the way that it's being run right now, there is no competition. And because there's no competition, there's no incentive to be better. Uh, right. Just keep skirting by the way they are. Um, so, Paul. Uh, no, no, no. We don't. Uh, I'm sorry. Paul, uh, Leo and I are going to invite you back. We're, we right now are at the bottom of the hour. OK, and we ha we have another show, unfortunately or fortunately, that we have scheduled to do. But I want you to talk to me, Joey, Ray, anybody you want to, including Leo. And let's plan next week a follow up show. Fair enough. You got it, Eddie. Thanks All right. Again. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Paul. That was Paul White, along with Leo Zaki. Leo, you and Lillian, stay tuned. We've got a quick break at the bottom of the hour. When we come back, we've got a whole nother show. Thank you, Ray. Talking to Victor from Precision Diamonds. Victor, I remember you yeah. in the old it's days. David. Park Lane Mall, a I kiosk. Know, it's a lot different now, isn't it? Man, that was a long time ago. In 1988, we've been blessed that we've been guided. And finally, we have bought an amazing building across the street from the convention center. We found a better way to serve you. You know, we call it home. We managed to create amazing energy. And when we say welcome to the family, boy, we really mean it. It is a family affair. Absolutely. 
And we couldn't have done it without our wonderful customers who believed in us for all of 27 years. So I'm here to really say thanks to all of our wonderful family members who are, we started as customers who now we know each other's children and grandchildren. All those years ago, a little kiosk in Park Lane Mall. Park Lane Mall is not there anymore, but you are still here. Yeah, we have solidified our future by buying this beautiful building on Virginia Street. So we're there to serve you. Thank you, Victor. Precision Diamonds, your local jeweler across from the convention center. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of Subway. Could be a smoker number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is a number one fave. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice fresh sandwiches, port of Subs. Port of Subs Rosemary Swiss Bread is back. Nothing smells better than fresh-baked warm bread with a hint of savory rosemary and topped with creamy Swiss cheese. The only thing better than the smell is the taste. Try it with your favorite classic sub or with any of our signature hot subs. It's mmm, mmm, good. That's Rosemary beautiful, Swiss Leo. Is here for a limited time. So beautiful. Visit neighborhood Port of Subs today <laughs> or order ahead. Hi, Lillian. Channel here. here. Pick up or delivery. Port good to see awesome. you. It's fresh for 50 years. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2066. Now back to the show. Back now. We are back now to America Matters with Eddie Floyd and Leo Zaki. Joining me right now is a guest host, and that's none other than Ray Roach of Red Move, Nevada. But also, I have, and I'm very fortunate, I've got Peter Padilla. He's part of the America Matters media family here. He and his beautiful wife, Sherry Hill, they do a show all of the time right here on America Matters every single solitary week but that's not what we're talking about today today it's to be or not to be right peter <laughs> oh as the great poet once said yes, yes sir. and i say to be yes to be. because i love to be i love to be a beekeeper and that's why i have with us in the studio joining us today eddie floyd is Debbie Gilmore oh, from wow. the Mason Valley Beekeepers. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. It's good to be here. And you know, Debbie, I've got to say something to you that I want our viewers on television because okay. they'll be looking at me, Ray, Peter, and especially you and Lillian Zaki because uh -oh. she is on the line with us from Hawaii along with her grandson, Leo. But good. right now, I want to tell you something. Okay. Congratulations. I have tried just about every honey made in the state of Nevada, okay, and your honey is my favorite. Oh, you're and I, so kind. I, I'm not Thank just you. saying that. I don't need any. <laughs> I still have. I still have enough. Yes. As a matter of fact, I, I believe right now to go to uh, Shanima, who's uh, on the show. Call her online. Call her online. I believe it's Steve, Peter. Let's see. Steve Jimenez, is that you? Hey, how's it going? Hey, doing great. Debbie Gilmore is here, too. Hey, Steve. Hi. How's it going? It's so great <laughs> to hear your voices. Oh, uh, it's good to hear from you. We're looking forward to seeing you in February. Amen. Hey, yes, yeah, we're very excited. And, you, you know, if you don't mind, uh, Steve, I'll, I'll be the one to ask you the first question. We'll go to a gentleman, Leo Zaki, running for governor in California. We also have Ray Roach here. As you, you know Peter Padilla, and you also know, you know Debbie. But here's what I'd like you to do, because this is so heartwarming to me. Tell everybody what you're doing when it comes to helping people with bees helping people raise bees, and exactly the people you're helping. Take it away, Steve. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do so and the show. We're excited to be here. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm with Hives for Heroes. And what we do is connect veterans to local beekeepers all across the United States, providing purpose and healthy, accountable relationships in local areas. And uh, what we've seen is that there's been this huge uh, desire to get back out into nature back out into healing and utilize this this amazing creatures that we have that um, that produce honey, that produce joy, um, that produce pollination, and we can serve them in different areas all over the country. Um, and our mission, of course, is to save bees and save them. You know, and when you say that, that happens to be one of our 
main missions here at America Matters, and that is to help our United States veterans. Matter of fact, our sponsor right across the hall here at the Reno Town Mall, I invite everybody driving around, stop by, give me the name and contact information of a United States veteran, because on the 23rd, which is next week, we're going to have a drawing, and they're going to get a free pair of boots or shoes or whatever they want at Proper Fit right across the hall, thanks to Mike Jones. We care about the vets, too. And Leo, can you imagine a program where they're helping veterans, which I know for a fact will reduce the suicide rate? Do you agree? Absolutely. And that's 100 percent. That's one of the biggest issues that we're facing here with our veterans is veteran suicide. Uh, I, I, I hate the number. I think it's like eight veterans at least a day are committing suicide. And that's that's horrific. These are the people that put their lives on the line to defend us and preserve our freedoms and liberties here. And the fact that they are feeling so downtrodden and so left behind that they're willing to take their own lives is heartbreaking. So it's so right. wonderful that there's plenty of charities out there that are helping this. And I'm really grateful that uh, Proper Fit is, is doing their part. Yep. And look at Steve. Look what he's doing to help vets learn how to take care of bees, okay? Because that can keep their mind off of all the negativity that they suffered when they were in the military, or they wouldn't have PTSD, Peter. Yeah, you know, Eddie, those of us who are in the beekeeping world, especially here in northern Nevada, uh, we take a lot of satisfaction and we have a lot of gratitude for the veterans in our world. Uh, We all have them in our family life, in our world. And Steve's project, working with veterans, Hives for Heroes, really gets us connected. Right. The veterans, the heroes, and the beekeepers. And beekeeping has a very special, I'll say, buzz about it, Eddie. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It really makes you think in a different way when you Uh become a beekeeper. And when you're around bees, well, imagine this. When When I'm in my beekeeping world, I start by lighting a big torch of fire. And then I put on a, a uniform that makes me more, more like a space right. man than a You look a like human. someone from NASA. Right. Yeah. Then I'm going, uh, I'm going after a box <laughs> with a little uh, hive tool in my hand that has maybe 40 or 50,000 bees in it. Wow. And wow. That's, what, that's how I get my joy. I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic point. Unfortunately, one of, the, one of the things that I want to correct, and not in a bad way, but the number for suicide rate is 22 a day. Yes. Oh, my. And eight I mean, is already yeah. uh, unbelievable. But the, the statistics that come from the VA are anywhere between 21 and 22. Right. And, and, Peter, you said that amazingly because the analogy for what we utilize is suiting up, just like we do going into combat or training. Yeah. Right? We go into an uncomfortable, unknown area, but we have processes and people that we understand and trust. Mm-hmm. So we trust ourselves, our gear, and our body into an unknown environment. Wow. So and finding success in that right. and building confidence in ourselves. So although you know we're an organization, we don't call ourselves a charity because what we're doing is giving up veterans an opportunity to... Uh, like a step up, right? A hand up, not a hand out. Right. So we're putting them in a position and an opportunity for them to be and their families to be successful. Right. And they're doing that with somebody in their local area that is now a friend and a comrade in their area. Amen. It's quite beautiful. Amen. Now, here's what I want to say to Leo, and I want you to hear this, Steve and Peter, and, and also, if you don't mind, Debbie, because right now you and I know one thing. Leo and his uh, beautiful grandmother, Lillian, they live in a state that is without a doubt in the top three agricultural states in the entire United States of America. How much do they depend on bees? Tons. 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 Say it again. (laughs) Tons. Tons. They have to have bees. Matter of fact, I learned a long time ago in Yearington at that conference I attended last year, I could not believe the fact that they actually truck these bees in. I mean, it's not a matter of, yeah, it's Steve. I'm sitting there going, are you kidding me? I'm scratching my head and going, there's more to this bee industry than I ever imagined. They gave me a little thing to take home, and it's for, what what do you call those, native bees or something? It's it's little tubes, little tubes that looks like it's in a birdhouse. I put it out there where I've never seen a bee in my life. And then about two, <laughs> about two weeks later, I came back, and every tube was filled with a bee. Every one. Oh, you're a good mommy, Eddie. <laughs> no. That's good. But, you know. It, uh, the drought's that territorial. It's awesome. They get to go into the spaces, and they, they, they create, what, one or two eggs, I think, if, if I'm not wrong. And, and, and then they just have it. They're done. It's, it's pretty cool. 
Debbie, you it is. follow up. Those native bees are pretty, pretty fun. They're more of a social, not a social, but a, a individual insect. They're right. not social like a honeybee. Right. And so they lay their eggs in those tubes and then they hatch in the springtime. So well, they're just little renegade bees. Yeah. <laughs> renegade <laughs> pollinators. Yeah, yeah, pollinators. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but by the way, just like uh, Leo and I were talking the other day, because he and I were talking way before we scheduled this show, the importance of bees, mm -hmm. be because, you know, you and I and Leo, everybody knows what Albert Einstein said. He said, if we don't have bees, we don't exist within a two-year time frame. Okay. Yep. And I think he's right. I yeah. really and most do. people don't realize that. Yeah. Uh, Steve, what got you started with uh, Hives for Heroes? Because <laughs> I love that. Here's what I want to ask you to do. Anything we can do, if you have some material that you can send me <coughs> that I can pass out to people here at the Reno Town Mall, Okay, I do wear a couple hats. I am a radio talk show host. I did found this company, but more importantly, for yours and my sake and everybody's, I'm the special events coordinator for the entire mall. Oh, nice. So anything that you can do or if you, Debbie, want to have a, some type of a meeting here, a get-together, you can go anywhere from two to 2,000 people right here in the Reno Town Mall. Whoa, that's it's a that great simple. opportunity. Yeah, I've seen some great events here, Eddie, and yeah. you've got a great facility right here at your front door right? Uh, where uh, a lot of organizations can take part and get benefit from the exposure that you give them with your radio program and the outstanding facility here for meetings. So thank you. I appreciate that. No, I, and I thank you, and Debbie, I certainly thank you for all you have done. You know, you, you live in one of my favorite places on earth. Every time there's a bummer lamb, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yep, I Every do. time there's a bummer lamb, my wife and I jump in the car and drive to Earrington and pick up this bummer lamb, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, now Earrington has a special place in my heart because I met so many wonderful people last year at the Beekeepers Association. Unbelievable. And Steve was one of them, right? Steve was and one of them. I think Steve fell in love with the area too, right, Steve? Yeah. Steve. Yeah, you kind of fall in love with the area and the people, because people matter. Amen. Oh, man. They do. That was, that was incredible. Yeah, you're uh, fantastic, and of course, at the Nevada State Beekeeping Conference. You know, uh, uh, Ray, before I come to you, I, I want to have you think about this. I want Ray to talk, but I want you to think about it, Peter, and you too, Debbie. I'm thinking about getting with Leo and, and planning an event over here close to Reno, like, let's say, Sacramento area or Auburn or something like that for beekeepers, because this needs to get out nationwide. The more people that we have that do what the two of you do, the better off this country is. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I see that it's the 13th annual Nevada State Beekeepers Conference. And can you describe it, the time, cost, and where it's going to be, one of you? Sure. It's our 13th annual. Um, it's in Yarrington, Nevada. It's on February 23, 24, and 25. Um, we have great speakers like Steve is going to be there as well. Um, we have workshops. We talk about beehive products. We talk about bee management. Um, we talk about programs like Hives for Heroes. We have photo contests. We have honey tasting. Um, oh, it's phenomenal. It, it's just a Don't fun. Don't tell Eddie that. It was a three-day <laughs> event. I mean, I was busy all three days <laughs> and loved every minute of it. And more importantly, like Steve, who we're talking to right now, do you know I can honestly look the two of you and I and say I did not meet a single person there that I would not invite to my home to dinner at the ranch. They're all really wonderful people, Peter. But are they going to let you back in? No, they're not. Probably, <laughs> they, 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 probably they, all the they, money. They, they, they actually, it's not a matter, they would probably let me in the beekeepers conference, but I can't get back into Yearington. That's the problem. Okay. <laughs> and Andy, I, I got to say that a lot of conferences that people go to, no matter what the reason is, uh, sometimes they find a great conference, not very good food. Other times they find great food, not very good conference. Right. This conference Ooh, yeah. has a great, great, great chef. Mm -hmm. The food is outstanding. I mean, it's a gastronomic dis delight. It is. And you <laughs> know what? Amazing. It, uh, it's Steve, so wonderful. Steve, you're, you're probably like me, okay? <laughs> I, I gained probably three or four pounds of knowledge, but I gained 10 or 12 <laughs> pounds of uh, fat from the wonderful yeah, food. Yeah, you really couldn't. 
really Watch the cons. <laughs> so uh, nice. Hey, Leo, so nice. let me ask you a question. What If we were to plan something, you and I put our heads together and work with Peter Padilla, who's part of the America Matters family, just like you are, we could plan it somewhere close like Auburn so that we could keep our fingers on it. You could handle California. I could handle the people in Nevada who would like to go there. Mm -hmm. And we could have guest speakers like Peter, like uh, Debbie, people like that who to get the ball rolling. Okay, they may or may not have something already in, let's say, Auburn or mm-hmm. Shingle Springs, or some little community like that, but they need to have it, Peter. Well, they do, and I, I, California has always been a mystery to me, and it is even more of a mystery now. Mm-hmm. So get this, Andy, Ray, and Debbie, and Steve, the California <laughs> State Beekeepers Conference. Guess where it was this year? Where? Reno, Nevada. Reno? <laughs> Reno? Yeah, they moved their conference to Reno because Nevada must have something they want, right? Well, yeah, i tell you what they have, and I mean this with all my heart. They have Debbie Gilmore, and they have Peter Padilla, and now every uh, year they have Steve coming as well, and along with every other person that I met. And you know what? I would name every one of them that I met because I loved each and every one of them, but I don't have the time. We only have about 15 minutes left. But, you know, I'm excited about this. Leo, I think it's something that you and Lillian and I could put together and uh, really start it off, kick it off. We could call it the Lillian Zaki B Conference. I love that. Well, I think this would be great at the Tulare World Ag Expo. Uh, just having having you guys come and have a booth or or set up a way where you can have you you know speak to the audience out there. It's, a, it's the biggest ag expo in the world. I mean, people fly in from everywhere. And when I was there, this past year, they even had these electronic uh, uh, beehives that, you know, basically take care of themselves. And I mean, it's so uh-huh. important and integral to agriculture in California. So I think that would be a really great place to start, in my opinion. Oh, wait, yeah. a, wait a minute. Wait, I got to ask a quick mm-hmm. question. And then, Peter, I'll let you answer. Did I hear him right? There's an electric beehive that does everything. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was an electric shaver when I first heard about that. I, <laughs> I have not heard of an electric beehive. There, there's a lot of new inventions going well, on I right bet. now. Yeah. So it sounds like another one. Yeah. Well, yeah. well it does. Yeah. yeah. I, will, I will say, unfortunately, there's no cure better for mental health, for, for physical health for your financial well-being than getting out into nature and working with these amazing creatures with your own hands. Oh, yeah. You're it's, right. It, it's, You're a, right. It's, a, it's therapy, uh, you know, for uh, anybody to benefit from. Uh, if you had a stressful day, if you have a stressful life, I mean, when you tend to your bees, uh, it's, it's an incredible experience. And unless you're a beekeeper, you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm telling our listeners who are not involved in the world of beekeeping, if you want to enhance your life in all directions – Consider becoming a beekeeper by attending the 2023 Nevada State Beekeepers Conference. Right. And, you know, Debbie, I'm going to ask you this because you're here with the wonderful husband of yours, okay? He's out in the audience, and we have Peter here. I don't want either of you to leave until you tell me how much. I want to start small, but I do want to start being a beekeeper at Mm -hmm. the Wynema Ranch. You know, we take care of uh, 100 wild horses Mm -hmm. well i think i could take care of uh, two or three wild bees i think you could do that you know and uh it's not it's not that difficult financially to get started is it well it's an an initial uh, investment you Mm -hmm. know you can get your wooden wear and your bees and probably i don't know steve what do you think six to seven hundred dollars to start one Oh really? That's, That's all? right. I, I tell I tell people you if you're going to start two or just one like startup cost suit gloves gear everything thousand dollars just wow well, you know what? and by the way well worth it to help our ecology here in the United States of America I think everybody who has the opportunity to do that if you live like I do on a postage stamp ranch, then you absolutely could do that and not affect anybody. My nearest neighbor is like a mile and a half away, okay, and, you know, I'm not worried about him getting stung. Matter of fact, you know, speaking of getting stung, what, what, the EpiPen, is that what it's called? Yes. We have one. We mm-hmm. have one out at the ranch That's for people good. visiting the mm-hmm. horses just in case they just get the stung. Yeah, because you never so here's know. A, another thing about those, the, the, the actual stats, right? Right. So we, people are typically, even from childhood, feared the bees. Well, the actual stat is one in six. Say that again. 
So one in six million Whoa. is your chance to get stung by a bee. So the fear that is associated in our childhood and sometimes later on from somebody else getting stung or being told that you're going to get stung is actually a fallacy. So a lot of people don't move towards beekeeping because they fear beekeeping. When in, in actuality, if you're kind with these bees, they're going to be kind with you. Remember, right. they only want to produce and reproduce. They don't care about you. Hey, would you guys want to produce and yeah. reproduce? Steve, and, and uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to ask Leo to do this because I'll foot the bill. I, I would like to get started with Steve, but being a United States veteran. That would make sense for me to do it. I'm not looking for a break. I'm not looking for any type of income from doing it. I want to help. But since we've got Steve on the air, let me be his, um, not his first, I'm sure, but one of his many vets that he's helped get involved with beekeeping. Ray, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I wanted to find out, is there a cost to your convention or conference? Yes, for all three days, I think it's 185 this year. That includes all meals, all workshops, everything. We have six meals. We have six snack breaks. We have all the, the speakers from all over the country. Um, so it's a pretty good deal. And but you have to understand something. What I said on the air, I meant from the bottom of my heart. I gained so much weight. The food, like Peter said, <laughs> the food is so phenomenal. And you got to understand, I'm not just saying that because of my wife. You know, my wife uses a smoke detector for a timer. So the, bo <laughs> the bottom line is all, all of her leftovers have to go to Yuck <laughs> you know. But the reality is very You're simple. Trouble. Yeah, I'm in trouble, but that's okay. It's close to Christmas. Well, I think food and bees bring people together. I do, too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, we want to provide Don't let Andy food. go, because yeah. he'll eat all the food. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> You know, and by, by the way, though, Peter, I am dead serious. The, the amount that it costs to attend, mm. that doesn't even cover the great food that you have available yep. for the people. That, I mean, it doesn't even come close to covering the food. I'm inviting everybody. You better get your butt <laughs> to Yearington this year, February the... 23rd through the 25th. You better get there. Believe me, I know. I'm speaking from authority. I was invited last year. I went. I had the time of my life. I learned more about Yearington, and I've lived here 43 years. I learned more about Yearington and the wonderful people who live there within those three days than I have the entire 75 years on Earth. That's, Eddie, why I call it Peter Padilla's Beekeeper's Vacation. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> it is a ton of fun. It is. It absolutely. And I guarantee you, you get to know I'm good enough and you'll get a free hug. From <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're wonderful, Steve. Yeah, you, you better believe that. Well, but the, all the people are like Debbie. Oh, they're just so nice. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, you really do enjoy the interaction with people and learning about beekeeping and, uh, and just this new world that you can uh, discover. It's almost like learning a new language. You start picking it up little by little, and before long, you're fluent, and it is a ton of fun. Again, I'm encouraging people, Eddie, to register for the Nevada State Beekeepers Conference on our website, nevadastatebeekeepers.org. You'll get all the details. Wow, and that's, say it again. Say the website, because I'm going to Leo and Lillian right now. So. Nevadastatebeekeepers.org. Uh, Nevada State Beekeepers dot org. Leo, let me tell you what. I am dead serious when I say let you, me, and Lillian put our heads together after the holidays and let's plan an event in California close enough to where I can hop over the hill instead of you always having to hop over the hill. I'll hop over the hill. I'll take uh, Lillian to dinner if you'll let me. Okay. And we'll have a blast and we'll have the first, first. Lillian Zaki Beekeepers meeting right there at whatever community we decide. Sound like a plan, Leo? Sure does, Eddie. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too, brother. And, you know, Eddie, i got to tell you, one of the great things you might think about is what Debbie does in January. Debbie, tell our listeners about the Beginner's Beekeeping class. January 21st, we're having our Beginning Beekeepers workshop. It's a one-day workshop, and it's meant for people who know nothing about bees. Me, and me. 
and would be interested in, in figuring out how to get your equipment, where to get it, how to get your bees, and all of that information. So mm -hmm. that's on January 21st. Right. Well, let me let me ask a silly question. Okay, I, I live on a, like I said, postage stamp ranch, mm -hmm. but I do get to select what part of the 600 acres I put the bees on. How far away should they be from my cabin? Okay, so, uh, or does it even matter? It doesn't really matter. You just don't want it in a walkway where you're constantly going by it. Right. So set it away so that they have room to fly out and up yeah. and out. Right. And now here's the yep. other thing yep. that I've got to ask. And Steve, I'm going to ask you because I know you might have the answer. I know Debbie does and I know Peter does. Out at the <laughs> ranch, what we have is wild Irish rose and we have rabbit brush. Okay, and we have sagebrush. Am I okay to have a, a beehive out there? Is there enough flowers out there? Uh, and I'll ask here's you. What, here's yeah. what I tell people. If you have native anything, those bees will survive because they have been for much longer than we ever have. You're just stewarding a nice home for them. Wow. There you have it. So I'll be okay. I'll be okay. You'll and, be okay. But so some people have different goals, and we can go into those types of things, but some people want honey production. Well, let me some tell you what want those, bees, Some people want increase. Right. Well, but if you just want the pollinators out there doing what they do best, there's no better place than right exactly where you're at. Well, you know what? Let me tell you what. Once I have a hive of bees of my own, you're going to have to change the statistics to one in every 5,999,000. <laughs> I just know my luck, Steve. That's all. Hey, Peter. Well, remember, we're handling them. We're handling them. So most people have the fear associated with just like, you know, walking around. We have bees on rooftops. We have bees at corporate campuses. I have bees in my backyard. Wow. Um, in inside of Houston in the city limits, and nobody knows they're there. Why? Because they're there anyway, right? Wow. Again, they're there. They're pollinating their thing. They don't really care about us. Um, so they're, they're going to thrive anywhere they are. Right, and you have them at your home, right, Peter? That's right, Eddie. I have actually five beehives in my backyard. Good Lord. And, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Very appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that that great comment uh, but it's true yeah uh, you, you know nobody knows that, that they're and when i talk about five beehives that's five houses right right currently mm -hmm. i have one colony active so i only have one beehive that has residents in it but in the spring i'm going to load up probably two maybe three more mm -hmm. and then i'll have three or four beehives in action one empty and that empty one is always there for, for guests i'm really? talking about bee swarm sure, yeah. if i catch a swarm i want to know i can put them right in that house ready to go do and you, do you have like a vacancy sign out there you know i actually <laughs> actually do but you know what though no, I'm, I'm i'm very very serious because i am going to get with you leo and i'm going to get with lillian i want to see something like this this would be fun if you guys knew the two of you knew and, of course, I'm telling them how much fun I had in Earrington, and here they are in Hawaii. Okay. Oh, I know. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, so if you find a beehive that, uh, that can survive on macadamia nuts, send them to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, deal. Uh, hey, you do me a favor. We're coming to the end of today's show. we got another show tomorrow at noon. But you kiss Lillian for me, Peter. Again, I want you to close out by saying to Debbie, Debbie, tell us the times and, again, how to get involved in the Yearington event. Debbie, tell us the times <laughs> and, again, how to get involved hey, in the Yearington event. You would make a great co-host, uh, Peter. Uh, there you go. You know, Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> used to say that he, he hated that his wife had a bird. Uh -huh. And, you know, that bird, he just didn't like that bird. He said that bird didn't like me either. He said the strangest thing, when I'd come home every night, from work, that bird would say the same thing. Quick, out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, Debbie, tell us as we have 30 seconds. How do we go? The Nevada ahead? State Beekeepers Conference, February 23rd through the 25th, 2023, in Yarrington, Nevada. And you can find more information and register at Nevada State Beekeepers.org. Wow. Debbie, thank okay. you so much for Thanks everything, for Peter. Me. You bet. Steve, thank you for calling in. You, you're so uh, much an integral part of today's show. Leo, kiss Lillian, and I'll be in touch with you prior to tomorrow's high noon show, brother. Bye, Steve. Bye, Leo. See y'all. Bye bye. Bye, Steve.
One in three adults in America have pre-diabetes, but most don't know it. To let people know it can be reversed before it becomes type 2 diabetes, professional basketball player Julius Randle is doing everything in reverse. I'm only dunking with reverse windmills. I drove the whole way to practice in reverse. I don't recommend it. This move's called the reverse shuffle. I do recommend it. And it took me months to learn how to speak in reverse, like this. <clears throat> Here's 10 almost for diabetes type 2 with living Ben has my mom. In other words, my mom has been living with type 2 diabetes for almost 10 years. So together, we want to say to the 84 million Americans at risk, exercise and healthy eating can help reverse prediabetes.